to the Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company podcast episode 12, I think. Um, my name's Emma and I am the dyer behind Woolly Mammoth Fibre Company and I am from Northern Ireland and that is where I dye the yarn. So this is a podcast, most of you probably know this, but it's a podcast mainly about knitting, a bit of crochet, a bit of sewing, just a bit of everything really. Um, so yeah, and I'm trying to do a few more episodes than I have than I did last year so yeah so I thought I would just start straight in and show you what I've been up to since the last time I podcast. In my last episode I went to visit um, the shepherdess of my new chivy at four ply yarn um, so it's kind of an interview with her and a tour around her fields and that sort of thing so um, you might enjoy that. But as for now, I'm gonna jump straight in. So I have been working on this blanket, my scrappy blanket for absolutely ages, using up scraps. This is the first thing I've crocheted since I was like 21. So like nine years ago. Um, so I had to basically reteach myself how to crochet. So I used up all my scraps from different projects. Most of it's knitted in natural sock or random bases that I used to have in the shop but don't anymore. But it's all four ply and yeah, so basically I just crocheted these big massive squares and then I just crocheted them together. So this is, um, I'm really pleased with the result of this and I would definitely like to make another one. Um, it's nice and simple crochet compared to knitting because it's kind of easy or something when you're just going round and round so yeah I'm really pleased with this so it's quite big so you can kind of see what it's like I'm just gonna put this over my lap now because we've actually run we've run out of heat and oil we've run out for like two days so it's quite cold in the house and it keeps trying to snow outside so um yeah it's a bit chilly so the next thing I have to show you, so this is my only finished yarny object. My other finished object is this t-shirt. Um, the pattern is 100 Acts of Sewing t-shirt number one, I think. I've used this one a lot, so I'd be surprised if you haven't, if you haven't seen this before. And the fabric is Atelier Brunette. Um, and I bought it from a local shop called Oso, oh which is in Bertine. So um, I put out on Instagram, um, what do you think I should make with this fabric? And I got a couple of people back saying that this fabric doesn't wear very well. So I was a little bit concerned about that, but I just decided, well, I might as well use it when I have it now anyway. So I'll just make t-shirts because I wear them all the time. And especially coming into spring, summer, it'll be really handy. And in the winter, I often wear these with like a turtleneck, polo neck thing below. And it's a really simple t-shirt pattern. It's just got a front and a back. So there's nothing to it. It takes no time at all. So yeah, I made one of these and I'm very pleased with it. So hopefully you can see the print. So yeah, I've got a few different types of different, a few different um, patterns. Um, prints on this fabric from the same place so I'll probably just make more t-shirts. Um, I always usually just buy the bias binding because I well I don't really know how to make bias binding and also it seems time consuming and takes a lot of fabric because you have to cut it in the bias so I always just buy it but maybe that's cheating so I don't know. Um, works in progress Um. This is, you're kind of probably getting my colour vibe here at the moment, pinks, um, yeah, like this colour, it's, I love this colour, I totally gravitate towards it. So this is my first um, patchwork blanket that I've ever made, and I'm working on this at the moment, it's just with scraps of stuff that I had. Um, my friend's mum is, hopefully you can see that. So it's just random, um, quite big squares. I asked my friend's mum for some advice on this. Um, a 
cut out my squares using up stuff that I had in my fabric stash. Um, and then between two weekends, I sewed all the squares together to make this patchwork front. So my next stage with this is to, I decided that I would like to put an oatmeal border the whole way around before I, um, before I baste it together. Um, I'm going to spray baste it and then I am going to, I think probably quilt in the ditch. I think that's probably what I'll do. So yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. You can probably see that it's not perfect. Like the squares don't line up perfectly. I was using a rotary cutter and I thought they were pretty accurate, but now I'm thinking they probably weren't. So, um, I'm not really sure how to rectify that if I do another one or maybe I'll never make another one. I don't know. Um, cause we have a lot of like regular rugs in the house so we don't really need a lot of quilts although at the moment we could do with lots because of the heat now running out and it's so cold I go to bed with three hot water bottles <laughs> um, I mean it's not cold compared to some places in the world but it's cold enough it's cold enough without any heating on my next work in progress is the Taylor's Rib hat um, by um, LB Handknits, Albina, Albina McLaughlin. I have been knitting this for a little while um, because she designed it in my yarn and then I made some kits for the release of the pattern, which was on Valentine's Day. Um, I have a few kits left, but in a light grey purple colour called Wildflower. So it's a really cool hat because it's knitted from the top down. I haven't, I, I think I said I talked about how it's constructed the last time, but so far I'm only here at the broom. So I've probably got like another eight centimeters or so to go before I can cast it off. Um, again, I have a feeling it's going to be quite big. Look at that. I should have sized down my needle size. So either I will give this one away or I will rip it all out and do it again. I'm not sure which, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm really loving knitting this. It's quite a nice, fun, easy kind of knit. So takes two skeins of my BFL Masson Iron Weight. So I'm working on that. Hopefully I'll have it finished soon. The next thing I am working on is my nurtured sweater, which I'm knitting in my Shetland Iron Weight. And in the colorway Winter's Eve, I've had this colorway going for a little while, all through this winter. And it's a really nice kind of neutral colorway with little like pops of color. And it's really fun to knit with because occasionally you just get like a little pop of colour and I should say all of this all of the yarn that I dye is naturally dyed um so yeah just in case you were wondering I do a shop update like once a month or so and this is my nurtured sweater um this is a pattern by Andrea Myre and, and it's a crop sweater so the reason I'm knitting this is to go with a high-waisted skirt that I have that none of my other jumpers look right with so i decided i needed a cropped um sweater and um, i made quite a few modifications because um when i cast on the body i thought oh this is looking kind of big so i don't know why because the gauge was right on the sleeves so basically i cast on i think it was 152 stitches um because i want it like something slightly closer fitting and i think it's i think it's looking good at the moment i hope it fits um it should um uh what other modifications did i make that was the main one so at the moment i'm on doing the raglan so i have to be careful what stitch kind i end up with when i'm like doing the the ribbon for the the collar and stuff like that so I'm almost there I should be done with this in like maybe two weeks or so um 
I would actually really like to be done with it a little bit sooner so I can wear my skirt because I feel like I've got nothing to wear with and it's too cold outside not to wear a jumper. Um, that is my last work in progress that I have to show you actually. So um, yeah, I'll just show you a close up of the colours. It's quite fun. And I did have kits for this in the last update, but, or no, I didn't have kits. I just um, dyed a load of this um, yarn. So, so knitting dreams, knitting future dreams. Um, so at the moment in my mind, I would like to knit quite a few things as probably everyone does this. They have so many ideas and they don't have time to do them, but they, yeah. So my plan is um, to, I have one sweater to finish apart from my nurtured sweater. Um, it's called the Scale Gra and it's by LB Hand Knits again. She's a local designer. Um, but I would like to cast on a Penguono by Stephen West um, in all naturally dyed colors. Um, just gonna throw this around me because it's kind of chilly in here. Um, is this appropriate for a podcast? I don't know. <laughs> um, so the penguino is a really, I'm sure you know what it's like, it's a really like loose kind of cardigan. There's no like buttons up the front and I have a few like oversized t-shirts, like linen ones that um, I would like something to wear with and my jumpers are not kind of baggy enough. So I would like to create penguino just so I have something nice that I can throw on kind of over the top of those. Um, so yeah, so I wanna just have something that I can throw on over the top of those t-shirts and just something kind of um, cozy to wear around the house we live in a really old house and it's not extremely warm <laughs> even with the heating on <laughs> um so yeah i want to knit that and i also would like to knit a still point sweater by tiff nellen um tiff nellen is a really lovely designer she's got a really a nice style and this sweater the still point sweater is a it's a dk weight um sweater with a lace yoke so I've already bought the pattern for that and I have a yarn sitting ready. I'm using the Natural Sock DK in the Jasmine colorway, which is like a, a cool toned off-white. Um, so yeah, I thought that would be really nice. Uh, other things that I would like to knit are a pair of mittens, maybe color work mittens in my Chevy at four ply. I know um, Skein Deer has, um, nice patterns for color work mittens so I might do that um, and I would love to cast on a shawl I really would um, I don't know which one maybe one by Tammy Gore she has so many nice shawl patterns she has a new one that uses 10 mini skeins it's called the K Kayla Kayla wrap I think I'll put it below Um, it uses 10 mini skeins plus another skein. So I'm thinking that would be really fun because I'm getting in the shop, I'm getting loads of mini skeins are coming in in my natural sock. So I'm thinking, oh, that could be quite fun. And it's really, I love with knitting with different colors and changing colors all the time. It keeps it kind of fresh and fresh and juicy, as they say. <laughs> fresh and juicy. So yeah, so I'd like to cast on a shawl and I would, I had something else in my head that I wanted to knit. That's so many things like it's never gonna happen. I mean, it'll happen sometime. So the last thing that I had in my mind that I would like to knit is a Marit cardigan, a color work cardigan. I was watching a podcast by Constance, her name is, oh, her podcast is called Stitches Over, something stitches over time and she knits all these amazing like alice starmore color work cardigans sweaters 
and I was just like totally like blown away by like the color color choices and like how fast she knit stuff I was like oh I'm so slow compared to that she said she can knit I think it's four ply but she said she could knit a color work jumper in like a month and I was like whoa that's so impressive so it got me and I it got me thinking I'd like to do some all over color work which I've never attempted be before and I feel like it's slightly beyond me but the other day I dyed up some BFL Massim 4 ply it was supposed to be for a custom order and it went kind of wrong but the color is amazing that I got by mistake so I'm thinking that would be really nice for a Marit cardigan it's like a deep plum and I think that with the undyed grey and maybe like a mustard green or a moss green would be really nice. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. So sometime in the future when I feel like I can, um, when I'm able to tackle that and I have the mind space. So yeah, as you can see, I have a lot of things I want to knit. So I don't know, do you have a way of like structuring all the things you want to knit or do you just start into them or... Do you knit just one thing at a time or like how do you manage to knit all the things do you just knit faster in the uh and constance was saying that she knits sometimes from 6 p.m to 12 a.m so that's obviously how she gets so much done by the time i sit down in the evening i'm lucky if i can do two rows <laughs> which is why everything takes so long um, so yes, I might need to give myself a bit more oomph and a bit more motivation and maybe a few deadlines to get things finished. So yeah, so that's my knitting dreams. Um, things in the shop. I have got Pom Pom Magazine issue 32. Um, I don't get magazines all the time in the shop. Um, I don't know how long I'll continue getting them for because they're heavy to post and well yeah a few other reasons but basically um, they're heavy to post and it costs quite a lot and also like truth be told you don't make much money on them so it's quite a lot of effort for like not but at the same time, I really like having them in the shop because they're like a really nice addition and they're they're not they're interesting. I don't know. What do you think? Do you want to keep seeing magazines in the shop or not? Anyway, I want to show you this. Um, because I have some yarn in a design in here, so I'm just gonna quickly show that to you. It's called the Kerry Sweater by uh Winka. Perterman, per Perterman, hope I said that right. Um, and it's knit in my BFL Massim 4 ply. And I have pre orders actually open for it at the moment. Oh, where is it? When you go to look for it, then you can't find it. Okay. There are some amazing things in this in this um, issue. There's a few things I'd really like to knit. So this is the sweater. You can see the nice stitch detail. And I think it was inspired by clouds maybe, I think. And yeah, the other designs in this magazine I really like are this one, which is called uh, uh, Nibla. Isn't that stunning? And it's by Camilla Larson SV. I just think that's so nice. And it looks kind of cropped as well, so you could use it you know with like dresses and stuff as well so I really like that other one and I also really like this I think is really stunning as oh just everything this one which is 
is the uh, Boobied Pillover by Natalia Sinelshikova. Sorry about the pronunciation, but isn't that so gorgeous? So I really like that and that would be so nice for summer as well. So yeah, Pom Pom Mizine have this in the shop at the moment. Um, I'm going to post out the UK pre-orders of that tomorrow so that they arrive hopefully Friday, Saturday. Um, so yeah, I've got some more of this in the shop. What else? Oh yeah, I still have a few places on this month's Dystopian Novels Club. The book we are using as the theme is The Man in the High Castle. So those the pre-orders for those will be closing at the end of the month. Um, the North Atlantic Islands Club for this month has sold out. I'm wondering whether you'd be interested um, in me putting a few more spaces up for that club next month because it seems to sell out pretty quickly. So do let me know your thoughts on that. And yes, I don't know when my next shop update will be, um, probably mid to late March. I haven't decided yet, but if you keep an eye out on my website on the announcement banner, I'll put it there and also I'll have it in my Instagram bio. The other thing I have coming to the shop is the 52 weeks of socks, which I have some yarn in also in a design by Verena Coors called Gerste socks so i have a pre-order up for that still as well and um for the yarn and for the book but again i i probably won't restock most of these magazines and books just because i'm thinking of maybe phasing them out i don't know um so yeah so if you have anything you want to see for the next shop update just send me a message because there's like Pretty high chance I can make it for you, unless I've run out of the base or something. Um, yeah, don't be scared to get in touch if you want a custom order or anything like that. I can usually accommodate them pretty easily. And yeah, I hope to um, see you again before long. Um, maybe I'll try and do another episode in the next couple of weeks. So happy knitting and I'll see you soon.